five-time DC Golden Gloves champion. Very celebrated amateur. They have three hopes for Melvin Foster coming out. It's only 25. Matter of fact, beginning his pro career, the early hype was that he is Tyson Marciano all rolled into one, and that statement is uh, not difficult to figure out who his promoter is. <laughs> Dennis Rappaport. No doubt. Dennis Rappaport, Fred Kerr. But there was a time that Melvin actually ballooned up to 232, and, and at that time he actually uh, looked like Tyson Marciano and Frazier rolled into one. But he has come down now to 223 pounds. He was wearing their size, all of them. <laughs> Going low again is Wooden, but blinded was the referee. Yeah. The other side. Wooden really has to concentrate to bring that left uppercut up. I mean, oh, a nice right hand. Um, Melvin Foster against these left-handed fighters who taught the throw. Straight right hands, right down the pike, and a real wide swinging left hook. And there is the left hook. The way the left-handers stand, they are off balance to see both those punches. Still battling for control back and forth. USA's Tuesday night fight. A couple of heavyweights waiting in the main event. Undefeated Hasim Rockman, former heavyweight champion of the world, Trevor Burbank. Trevor always entertaining when he is on the scene. And some interesting things to say about his opponent, about himself, and life in general. <laughs> He's a terrific philosopher, isn't he? <laughs> and now on the new Herb Diet. And says uh, at 42, he could go another 10 years in the ring. And he's uh, not been one for lack of confidence. Plenty of that. Trevor Burbank. Still has power to be an interesting fight. Rockman's very confident and thinks he's ready to make that step up after just 17 fights. Really has not fought any major wins until tonight. Not all, but that's the story in boxing. You try to pick up a win over an aging veteran former world champion, but many times the former world champion of the aging veteran still has a little bit too much left. And that's what Herbert thinks. Yeah, as Trevor would, have, would, would lead us to believe, and he may have that. Third round action here. Melvin Foster on the right. Jeff Wooden now with his back to you, both in the white trunks, and Foster heard it from his corner in between rounds, so they think he's Posing, freezing a little bit too much in front of Wooden. Yeah, they wanted to throw more of those, the right hand. But Jeff Wooden, real hard to reach. First of all, you're punching up if you're Melvin Foster, so he's hard to catch. And he pulls back rather nicely. See, he's not really putting all the force in his punches. He's pawing rather with that right jab. You have to catch him coming in. And you have to also slide over and cut that ring off. Right now, Melvin Foster just, just walking around the ring, following him. You know, ironically, it was uh, Wooden who, who said that sooner or later, Foster would wear down so that, and he'll try to pace in this fight. So far, Wooden's been doing a lot of pacing himself. And, and Wooden does something, too. He drags his hands and he throws the punch. That's what he shoots a shot out, he brings the punches back down to where they are right there. Leaves himself open. What Foster is trying to do is follow those punches back. And you've got to jab. Jabbing Southpaw is real difficult to beat. To beat. You, see, you show them that jab, and they can see your left-handed stance, and your opponents get confused. It's scheduled for 10. Seconds to go in round three. We'll pause for word from your local cable system. Hi, everybody. Al Albert and Sean O'Grady. A couple of lightweights here at ringside watching a couple of heavyweights and even two more later on. This, Melvin Foster and Jeff Wooden. Foster on the left, Wooden on the right. And we have Trevor Burbick, 
world heavyweight champion, only since he undefeated the young, the promising Hasim Wahid. Tony Orlando breaking these two, and uh, they're just kind of getting into the fight. They did face one another in the Olympic trials with Foster winning a three-round decision, but both have changed so much in the four years. And kind of testing one another through the first three rounds to see if there are any similarities from 92. Well, really, it has to be a big surprise for Wooden because having seen Melvin Foster and Foster has really declined the last several fights, Foster comes out this fight with some condition and some aggression. He looked really good through the first three rounds. Yeah, he said, halfway through, and he said he really needed to time off after the, the Thunder defeat. Oh, Foster swinging at Wooden and Wooden snaps out. Yeah, Wooden just getting out punch. And Wooden, though, comes out with this round with more punches. He's having trouble matching the speed of Foster. Foster is real quick. A sharp right hand, quick on the inside, and a good left hook. Watch your head, says Tony Orlando. You also got to watch your front feet constantly stepping on your opponent's front toe. Right now, Foster beating Wood into the park. Yeah, and putting the putting attack on. Foster using aggression. This is something that Foster's not well acquainted with. Lately, normally, normally lately. He, likes, he likes to stay in the back, allow his opponent to come in and encounter. But he is leading this fight. Foster's pro debut won a four-round decision, and then he won the next ten by knockout. And Wooden keeps him away with that, tries to go to the body. Good kind of a jumping jab hook from Wooden. A hook that kind of turned into a jab. Got a headshot, but not much body work. Wooden tries to go downstairs. I think he heard you. Close in 10 seconds in the fourth round. Pretty good round for Jeff Wooden. Put the pressure on, but Melvin Foster countered him back. Wooden in that fourth round using some of his weight to muscle Foster around on the inside. Although Foster started quickly, but he heard it from Julius Hill in between rounds. He feels that the Foster.